photographer and with me is uh, is Stan Peel. Now Stan, in uh, 1979 you had a paper in Science uh, shortly before Voyager 1 went by Jupiter suggesting Io uh, would, have, would possibly be molten inside. What a piece of timing. Please tell us about it. Well, we had finished the paper a few weeks before that, and I had I had called Science asking them um, if they could get it published before Voyager went by Jupiter, which was only a couple of weeks away. And uh, they said, "Well, you can get us." You know, well, first they asked us, asked me how good is it. And I said, "Well, I thought it was. We thought it was pretty good." And uh, uh, I should mention Pat Casson and Ray Reynolds, who are my co-authors yep. uh, at Ames Research Center. Uh, and so they said if we could get two reviewers in the Washington area, or uh, New York area, I guess it was Washington, I can't remember which, uh, that they could get it out, or probably could get it out. So I, I called up a couple of my friends and they agreed to review, and um, uh, one of them wanted changes. And I made changes on the, inter uh, on the telephone with the editor of Science, and I never saw the, the correct, the, the, uh, you know, they got nothing in writing from us. Yeah. And so, anyway, science did better than they promised. They actually got it on the, out a week before Voyager went by Jupiter. So it was on the desks of all the Voyagers, scientists and engineers, before Voyager got to Jupiter. And so when these plumes came, of course, we got verified that, in fact, it, we had not predicted it would be active. But uh, we did predict it that it would, it would be uh, there would be no no impact craters because of the resurfacing from the volcanism. But there it was, big plumes coming out, uh, uh, detected by uh, an engineer at JPL actually, who found who found these things. And uh, so we were verified, in fact, that Jupiter uh, Io was not only volcanic but actively volcanic. It was you know the most volcanic uh, object in the solar system. Yeah, what, what, a, what a great piece of timing. Uh, a lot of people assume that Io's volcanic activity is because it has a very eccentric orbit, but the orbit isn't that eccentric, is it? Well, we made our first look at that problem when we actually looked at, at Io before this time, and uh, we looked up the eccentricity published and it was 0. 0.00001 or something like that, which is not sufficient to cause any tidal heating. And, and what we didn't realize was these eccentricities were published for something called free eccentricities, and there was also a forced eccentricity because EO was in a resonance with Europa and Ganymede. And a two to one resonance with Europa, and Europa is in two to one with Ganymede. This is the so called Laplace relation, and it forces the eccentricity up above 0 0.001, which was sufficient to cause the heating. And my colleagues at Ames were able to show that EO uh, could not lose the heat as fast as it was being produced by the tides. So the temperature had to go up and it had to melt. Okay, but, but point zero zero 0.001 or however many zeros, if you draw it, it still looks like a circle, isn't that right? It's very close to being a yeah. circle, but it's sufficiently eccentric to the tide very enough to cause the heating. Yeah, that's the, that's the, that's the important point, I think. It's just enough to do the job. And it's, of course it's not just Io, there's Europa has tidal heating inside and several satellites of Saturn have in the past, perhaps Enceladus does today to explain its activity. It may, yes, but all the calculations show that it's insufficient for Enceladus. This. Um, it uh, may be sufficient for Europa to keep the uh, you know dissipation in the ice shell may be sufficient to keep the ocean melted, and we're pretty sure that the ocean on Europa exists, okay, and that the tidal tidal heating or whatever is sufficient to keep it melted. Thanks for your time, Stan. It was it was, it was great to talk to you. Okay, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs>